What's up, guys? Welcome to another local band, Smoka. I'm your host, is Higher the Most BG, and we have reached our 5,000th channel what? upload. Now, I had no idea what I was going to do for this particular 5,000th uh, video, but I thought I'd kind of just talk about some. I wrote down some stuff talking about how this started, guests we've had over the years, guests that were really tough to deal with or tough to get an interview set up with, um, how the first reaction looked versus how it looks now, all kinds of stuff. So, Basically, the show started when uh, I used to be in this band and I had this idea of doing reaction videos for, for homies in the area. Now, this is like eight years ago when reaction videos really weren't that popular. And they all thought it was like the stupidest idea that I've ever had. And out of spite, I thought, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. And I convinced one of my bandmates to do it with me. And that's how we got led to the first uh, reaction video I ever did. And at that time, it was called Season 1, Episode 1 of Local Band Smoke Out. Um, and you can see we're in a room. It kind of at that time started as how stoned can we get uh, on camera <laughs> while while still uh, checking out bands and, and trying to give someone a review. And it was kind of a disaster. And we did that for, for quite a long time. And uh, it led me to... Uh, well, basically, I did that for probably like 2,000 episodes, like 2,000 over the period of like three to four years. Um, and there were nobody was watching. I just kept doing it. And people were like, why are you doing this? You're getting like 10, 15 views, maybe uh, a video. I was totally not monetized or anything at the time. Um, and uh, there was kind of like a, a breakthrough day when I was talking to somebody about it. And he was like, bro. Reactions are starting to get really popular, but the thing is you're doing reaction videos to to artists that nobody is trying to check out. He's like, I like your format. You just have to every now and then do one for, for a bigger artist. So I started to do exactly that. Just uh, probably about a year later after that. So this would be like year five. And uh, I started just doing reaction videos to not only small bands, but big bands. And I noticed when I did the big band ones, people were watching them and hitting the sub button. So I try to mix in a lot of those lately for growth reasons. Um, over the years, we've had tons of guests come on the show. In fact, going back to that picture I just showed you a minute ago, I've actually, at the time, back in the day, used to have touring bands that would come in and stop in and smoke with me in this particular studio, which I don't live there anymore. Um, they, and they would stop in and we'd smoke together while listening to their song, which is kind of a fun way to do it. Um, but, uh, after a while it was time to move to a different location and something else that really helped was starting to build a team. If you think you can handle everything all by yourself, well, more power to you. Cause I absolutely needed help with as many things I was trying to do and build all at the same time. It helped building a community of mods and teammates that could really, set the show in the right direction, I guess you'd say. Um, but I did want to check, take a look at some of the guests we've had over the years. Um, even though it says it's only 197 videos here, I promise you I've probably done almost 700 interviews in my lifetime. I just didn't start uploading them all to YouTube until, I don't know, like this says one year ago. And this is the oldest one in the interview playlist. So for literally like three or four years, I just didn't upload any of them to YouTube. I don't know why. It was just a complete fail on my end. But uh, some of the ones that were really fun, and a lot of them are fun, but some are more fun than others. Kurt Travis was like a really special one to me. Um, I'm actually talking to him again this Thursday. Uh, most of them are smaller bands. Some of them are big ones. Like this is Kevin Lyman, only 37 views, which is sad, but just really, really cool to be able to talk with him. We've talked to Skylar Drive a gazillion times. This one's 3,000, just a gazillion times to talk to Scott Drive, but I love those guys. Those are the homies. There's Jag, Andy Sizzik, a whole bunch of different interviews over the years that were that were fun. Um, one of the toughest ones we ever did <laughs> was definitely the Skits Craven interview. He was not ha happy being there at all the entire time. I don't know who tricked him into, <laughs> into doing an interview with me, but he, he was not happy about it. Uh, let's see. Building a team, uh, consistent content. Something else that really helped me too is being consistent. Like if you're someone that makes YouTube content or social media content for anything, 
Um, I highly recommend doing it on like a scheduled basis or one a day or one in the morning, one at night, some kind of consistency where if you start to build traction and fans, they expect a video from you. So that's, that's one guaranteed view from this person immediately when it drops, like stuff like that. Try to, uh, build consistency. And I don't really have a consistency. I just post five or six videos every single day. I have no really rhyme or reason. As you guys know, this is any genre show on a daily basis. I'll see people come in and be like, oh man, this Lunar Shore kicks ass hitting the sub button. And then probably within 10 minutes, they'll unsub because right after that, I did a black pink reaction or, or some guy in India playing guitar or something like that. Like people, they like their channels to be exactly something, something. So I think that kind of hurts us sometimes, but at the same time, it's just who I am. I, I'm a guy that listens to every genre and I support all kinds of different music from all over the world. So that's something I'm going to consistently stick with. Uh, let's see. I, we are planning on going mobile in the future as far as just we're at a venue backstage and we have some form of setup where we do an interview right then and there. Cause it's sometimes that's the only time you can do those because certain bands are just not interested in doing it through webcam or just don't have the time. But if they're about to play an hour or two later, they might have a good five, 10 minutes for you. You never know. So that's something I want to uh, tackle more in the future. Um, what's next? I don't really know. I know that in the immediate near future, it's sold out everywhere, but there's a particular um, camera that I have my eye on to upgrade all the visual aspect of this. Um, I know a lot of people don't like the way I shoot the reactions where I'm this small in a corner and the, the talent is full screen, but that's something that was like important to me over the years is the talent is the reason I'm even doing this. And it drove me crazy how I'd watch other reactors and their video would be like this big of whatever they're reacting to. And I get it. We're supposed to be watching a reaction, but you can see me do whatever I'm going to do in the corner. So after doing 5,000 of these, I might slightly switch up what you see visually once that new camera comes in just to unfortunately kind of do what everybody else does. And I hate doing what everybody else does. Cause I always like to do my own thing, my own way, but I feel like in some other aspects, it does hurt the growth of the channel. Um, and then I did want to touch base on one thing. That's just kind of funny to me is, uh, the hardest interview that I never got is the last thing I wrote down before we wrap this up. Um, I, discovered this band called wind waker they're gonna hate the fact that i'm saying this but i discovered this band called wind waker like five years ago and they're there at the time they're a local band now now they're on fearless records but um of any band that's ever not come on the show that was the one i wanted the most and i never understood why they uh would not come on they would just avoid it avoid it and then they'd message me lots of messages about what's updates on the album uh, their previous vocalist, Will, like really opened up his heart to me. And I was like, bro, we got to like talk about this so people would know. And they would just avoid it. And I don't really know to this day why they refuse to come on. But uh, I get it. Sometimes it's the the marijuana mantra, which we have definitely toned down over the years. As, as mentioned, when I first started doing this, I would just hit the bong, do a dab, rip a joint all at the same time during the three or four minutes of a song and just be blasted trying to talk about it. And that just kind of got old after a while. Like as someone that smokes weed on a regular basis every single day, it's just not needed in, in the videos anymore. It's, it's, it's more about the content of the talent and, and what I feel from, from the music. So I still have, you know, your pens and bongs and all that stuff, whatnot. It just, it's you, after seeing so many and doing so many, I think people just know that I'm almost always baked when I do these, but at the same time, I'm not. And over the years, I, I think I've met a lot of people from the show and they're like, dude, I expected you to come in here with like a, like a 10 foot cone and, and just blowing hard trees nonstop. And the reality is that even though I smoke every day, I'm not anywhere near as big of a, as a stoner as some of my friends are. Um, Cause I do like to be able to consistently hear and, and, and focus. I guess I tend to get a little, a little unfocused if I smoke too much. So uh, just to kind of like maintain focus. And at the same time, I have two kids now, so I can't have the house fogged out all the time. So it's just toned down a little bit, but regardless, this is the 5,000th video. I had no idea what I was going to do for this video, but 
here we are. I appreciate you guys and your support. Um, something else that really helps the channel grow is checking out our Patreon. We have a Patreon at uh, patreon.com slash localbandbg. It would have been at local band smokeout, but we forgot the login info <laughs> after we set it up a while ago and before launching it. And I don't know how that happened, but we had to go with local band BG. Um, but yeah, this is this is our our 5,000th video, which is insane. Thank you to my wife for putting up with many nights of headaches, of which they've gotten a lot easier as far as like shooting and editing these. But in the past, I had uh, this DSLR camera and a separate mic and then the audio and I have to run to a different room to edit and I'd have to sync up the music to when I start hearing it in the video, all that I don't have to do anymore. I can do it in like literally shoot a video, edit it in like three minutes and post it within another five or six. It's like a 15 to 16 minute turnaround time per video when in the past it was like an hour. So that's cool. But yeah, shout out to my wife for, for being by my side during all of this. And um, yeah, here's to the next 5,000 videos, I suppose. And I uh, appreciate your support once again. And cheers. I'll catch you guys next time. I'm your host who's had the most BG saying uh, peace, cheers, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Smoke weed every day. Yeah. Give me a hell yeah.